Uh, pretty nice night. A lot of work to be done. Not a lot of people going to be sitting here, but hopefully some of the comments will be accessible and they can find them later and see what we've got to share. Pretty much an excellent year for the cattlemen, the cow calfmen. Got through winter and spring calving without too many major problems. An excellent summer for grazing. Feed supplies are high and the market prices are phenomenal. So uh, could be one of the best ever years for some of our cow calf producers. We're going to talk a little bit a little on uh, some budgets and maybe what it looks like as far as the alternative of feeding your calves versus selling them. And there's a few key points that kind of come out this year. Probably the number one thing is these prices are prices we've never seen before. Uh, if you're going to be buying calves, they're going to be expensive to fill the pens. If you've got calves on the cow, it can be real tempting to sell them. They're going to generate a lot of cash. Thank you. John, are you still with us? I'm still here, but my uh, PowerPoint seems to have disappeared. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll take a break for a few minutes while we try to resolve that issue. <laughs> still up on this computer. Um, is anybody else still in the system other than John Duvetter? Yeah, Fargo's here. Thanks, Tim. Street? We've got some some system problem. Everything was going good. I think uh, McIntosh County hooked in, and yeah, we're yeah. back with you now, John. I can see your picture. Okay, we're back. We're going again until we get interrupted with another alert. Um, Awful good cattle prices on the slide. I've indicated what some people have actually sold calves, contracted for, will be delivering in the next three, four weeks. 550 pound calves at $2.75 is a lot of money to buy a calf, and it's awful good money to sell a calf at. Don't look that uh, the supply and demand situation is changing drastically, so it might be a fairly stable, or we can kind of think the fundamentals are in place. That we're not looking for any wild moves, although today we had a little bit of a limit down, but as the market rallies up, there's going to be some up and down days. Generally, the outlook is pretty positive. <coughs> Try to get some prices for planning and doing some budgets, and when we pull up our sale barn reports, we notice that there's not many calves moving yet. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a real good read on what they're worth. Uh, this was a Napoleon uh, market report from earlier in the month, and it does show some pretty extremely good prices. I was working on this presentation yesterday and I pulled up the uh, futures market and we had a pretty good day. They were up strong. We have uh, cattle trading out into the future months in which we'll sell background of calves at feeder weights of, uh, in the 230s. Uh, then today she took a little bit of a dive and so we're not quite as strong uh, currently. So we got expensive calves, that's one of the themes. The other theme is we got a lot of feed around and we got a lot of cheap feed compared to what we've seen over the past several years. Got a large corn crop, declining prices, transportation issues, wide basis in some uh, places, and so pretty cheap corn. Uh, we've also got some other opportunity feeds that have shown up, such as high vomitoxin or scabby wheat, winter wheat. Some of that is at a big discount in the market and will be available as a feed grade. Probably have some frosted corn that won't make good test weight uh, merchandisable corn, but it will have good salvage feed value. And our hay stocks are been fairly good in the state. They're really high and the demand to suck this hay out to other places in the country kind of diminished as they got rains and the drought area shrunk. <laughs> Just put a slide up of what our local uh, grain elevator has got posted for prices. Uh, we can see on there that uh, you know corn is only in the little over two dollar bushel range. Quite a bit of a contrast to a year or two ago. Hay prices. Everybody kind of wants to know what hay prices are. There's not a real good market to gauge those by. But one of the things that we do have is a, a monthly survey done by our North Dakota Ag Statistics Service. 
They reported alfalfa hay for the month of September was at $84 a ton, and other hay, which is just a conglomerate of your grass hays, your mixed hays, and so forth, uh, was down to $59 a ton. Those are off from the month before. They're off substantially from last year. There's lots of hay around. It's not moving very fast. Third theme is with uh, the feeds that we have, we have potential to put some cheap gain on cattle, fairly cheap gain, uh, a lot cheaper than we have been able to. And if we get animals that perform well, feed prices, we can have cost of gains probably down there 60, 70, 80 cents, depending on what kind of animal performance and ration we're putting in front of them. Our interest rates remain fairly low. And one of the things to always watch for as far as looking at things and opportunities is typically the fall season feeder heifer calves are discounted severely to steers. Uh, we've seen in the last couple of years they've been 20 bucks, 15 bucks behind their steer mates. And sometimes it gives you an opportunity to buy something a little cheaper to put in the pens and gives you another option for a market as some of them might have enough quality to be packaged and bred and marketed as replacement cattle in which the market is very strong for. When you do budgets, which I'm going to share a few with you, you have to make a lot of assumptions and you have to put some prices and costs in that budget to come up with a bottom line. I pick some fairly simple feeds and put some prices on them. I use corn at 250 a bushel. It's a little stronger than what the market is out west, but by the time you haul a transport store, a little shrinkage and loss, that might be an appropriate number. Same for hay, I put $70 a ton on for 12% crude protein, 56 TDN hay. Uh, you can probably buy it cheaper than that, but by the time you grind and put it in a ration, you're gonna have that much into it. I price corn silage at $27 a ton, an Iona for Canadian protein supplement at 600, uh, and then distiller's grades at 120, and that includes a little extra for, you know, some transportation from the plant. I took those feed prices and then I plugged in four budgets I want to share with you tonight. One was a budget to just take some heifer calves. We have an opportunity to make a good buy on some or keep our own. In winter, I'm at a gain that's probably suitable for making replacement breeding quality or size heifers uh, by turnout time, which is one and a half pounds a day gain. And the, we feed some heifers from the 500 to 750 pounds. Then I had three steer rations, one that steers that are fairly typical of 550 pounds, a fairly typical background and gain of 2.5, feeding them up to 800 pounds. Some lighter weight steers that we probably didn't push as hard, only a two pound a day gain, taking them up to 750. And then if we got some of these big strapping good growthy calves that we don't want to stall out, keep moving them along, a three pound a day gain on some 650 weights, take it up to 900. So I'll go through those four budgets with you and that's give you an indication of maybe what's out there as far as cost to gain and margins that might be in these expensive calves with this cheap feed. And of course, there's a lot of assumptions in these budgets. Be aware that you can run these on a spreadsheet called CalfWeb, it's on the internet, or you can adjust these things accordingly as your local situation and prices dictate. First budget was the heifer budget. We're gonna put 250 pounds on these heifers, but we're gonna do it over most of the winter. 167 days of feeding. I gave them a fairly simple ration of grass, hay, a little corn, a little supplement, half a pound a day, cost the feeds. But those prices I showed you before was 84 cents a day. Taking that feed cost and that ration and plugging it into the calf web budgeting uh, spreadsheet, we uh, bought these heifers or priced them in at 265. I might be a touch high, uh, might be a little low depending on the quality of the situation in the day. Uh, sale weight was 750, gain was one and a half. The ration cost on an aspect basis is $88 a ton. Plugged in a 40 cent yardage cost in these budgets. And that yardage has to cover the wear and tear on your equipment, facilities, the upkeep, electricity, the fuel, and the labor to run this feeding operation and enterprise on a per head per day basis. I kept death loss at a fairly conservative rate of one and a half percent. If they're home raised calves, that's usually pretty achievable. If you're buying high stressed sale barn calves, that's probably only half of what it should be, if maybe even uh, should be stronger than that. I kept the vet medicine kind of as if they were your own calves. If we're doing some calves that have these stress issues, 
and we're given some antibiotics on arrival, that's certainly going to be higher. I did not plug any price protection, such as LRP premiums or put option costs into these budgets, but you can uh, figure those in off the bottom line if you'd like. This heifer, in winter, at a pound and a half a day, ends up having a feeding cost of feed alone of 55 cents a pound. When you add that 40 cents a day yardage, it goes to 81 cents. We end up with a break even of $2.15. I took a guess that used the futures market, a little basis for heifers, and uh, decided my best guess the selling price might be $2.20. So when we put that in there, there's not a lot of profit to be made at those inputs into this budget. Leaves a profit of $35 a head, plus you've made a yardage cost of $66 a head, and part of that is labor. So however you want to partition those out, there's certainly a positive return, but not a huge one. Then we took the more traditional steer calf, 550 pounds this time of year, fed him for 250 pounds a day again, but did that a little faster and only took 100 days in the lot. We had to feed him a little better ration, so an 80 some cents a day cost, it's a dollar six, because we're feeding some corn silage, some alfalfa grass, or mixed hay, some corn grain, a little supplement for protein, vitamins, and minerals, and uh, <coughs> Like I said, that's a dollar, a little over a dollar a day per head. Plugged in pretty much the same variables. Uh, the ration cost, because it's a wetter ration, it's got silage in on an as fed basis, it's a little cheaper. Uh, daily yardage costs, death loss, health costs, processing costs, we're all left in there the same. We end up, because these calves are eating more costly per day, but they're gaining more. The feed cost per pound a day goes down, it's down to 43 cents. We have a cost of feeding of 59 cents for our yardage and feed, and if we put death loss and interest, trucking and miscellaneous costs in there, it's 88 cents. We have a break even of 220, a little higher than the heifers because we bought them for, uh, I think I put them in at 275. Uh, just go back and look. Now at 280, so they were more costly as steer calves, and they had a break even of 220. I put them in at 225, a little basis under the 230 because they're eight weights, not seven and a half weights, and that left a small margin again in the pure profit line, plus a little labor to be rewarded in the yardage cost. Third was to take a bunch of steers that are a little light, lighter weight. Uh, feed them for a two pound a day gain, took uh, 13 pounds of hay on average at their average weight of 600 pounds in the feeding period, three and a quarter pounds of corn, used a little distiller's grains with that, and that had a daily cost of 83 cents per calf per day over the feeding period of 200 days. Put those lighter weight steers in at three dollars because when I looked at that Napoleon sale barn report, it was pretty easy for four weight calves to be at that level. Uh, that might have been a little conservative, even uh, looking at the demand for those. It looks like maybe there'll be some wheat pasture, or maybe the lighter calves will have a pretty strong uh, buying interest. They reached 750 pounds after a couple hundred days. Uh, Again, kept most of the rest of the expenses the same as the previous budgets. We look at those costly lightweight calves that fed feed cost under 50 cents, feed yardage under 70 cents, total cost of gain 96 cents, a break even of 218. Those steers in the March board should be priced pretty comparable at 750 pounds to. Uh, what the feeder index or trade is estimating, so I put them right in at 230, and that left an $82 margin for profit per calf uh, with these, this alternative. Certainly, if you think you have to pay or realize there's, they're going to be more costly than that, that'll come off that bottom line. And the last budget I'd like to share with you is for some of these bigger, heavier calves. These calves are 650 pounds that we're going to push a little harder. Uh, we have to feed a little harder. The ration cost per head per day goes up to 
dollar sixteen. I'm trading that. <coughs> Excuse me. Nine pounds of hay, fifteen of silage, seven and a half of corn grain, supplement, and some salt. And they were achieving on that ration with these bigger steers, three pounds per head per day, average good gain. I priced those bigger steers in at 265 to pick a number, which I think maybe they could be originally bought in this part of the state anyway. Uh, their ration, because it contained a fair amount of silage, was less on an asset basis. Uh, I bumped the death loss up a half percent because every time you kind of push cattle a little harder, put a little more feed in the bump, you open up another prospect of a few more health issues and digestive issues, such as bloat. And uh, so that's in a little bit higher. The rest of the costs are left the same. And again, no price protection in here, which is something that you certainly want to consider this year. If we look at the output of that budget, uh, we've got all the costs listed. You know what cost to buy that calf? That's a seventeen hundred twenty-two dollar steer. You're buying the feed. Uh, you're putting eighty-seven dollars of feed in, thirty-three dollars worth of yardage. You got a little marketing cost, trucking cost, interest cost, death loss cost. Uh, we've got close to two thousand dollars into that animal uh, after eighty-three days of feeding them. Cost to gain, cheap. About 80 cents overall, feed cost only 34 cents, feed and yardage 48 cents, a break even of 214. I thought maybe that heavier nine weight steer going to be a basis back, uh, eight ten dollars for where the feeder market is trading. So I probably priced him as an out price of 220. That generated a little over the cost that we got in them for a profit of 51 dollars. Now those do show that cost of gains are low. Expensive calves have potential to make some money. Uh, everybody can work on their own feeds, their own yardage costs, their own buying and selling expectations, and run these budgets to see if it looks like it's work, gonna work for them. But in spite of a little positive on the bottom of all four of these budgets I've shared with you, there's a lot of risk when you get $2,000 of a calf tied up in buying the calf and feeding the calf. If you have health issues, non-performance issues, death loss issues. Uh, the profits can be eroded away really fast. A 2% death loss on these $1,500 in calves takes 30 off the top of all the rest of the calves. You know, so uh, not much room to lose them when you're paying that kind of money. Of course, there's also the risk, as we saw today, high markets don't just stay at one level. They go up and down. They can have more potential, maybe for some down and up at these high prices. So we want to make sure we protect ourselves and feed the cattle with some kind of uh, forward contracting, price insurance, options, or marketed uh, price decline risk strategy. So with that, I probably used up uh, my segment of time. You got people who will talk a little more about uh, market protection, a little bit more on some of these feeds that are available and the rations. And I will uh, conclude and turn it back over to you, Carl. Thank you, John. Is there anybody out there that might have a question? I think we can entertain one or two questions for John. Um, if there's a question, by all means, please ask. We'll wait. While we're waiting for you to ask a question, I'll just comment and say, John, it seems like those four-weight calves are priced pretty high, but based on your budgets, they could be priced even a little bit higher. You agree? I think we hear in the stories that some of the low four-weights are actually pushing the four-dollar range. So I think you know, you'd have a tough time buying some of the high quality lightweight calves at the number of maybe I put in. Are there any other questions for John? Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Yeah.